So, GNU Radio Blocks with JavaScript, uh, building SDRs with JavaScript, and the caveat on that is soon. However, I am solidly getting into GNU Radio, and by the end of this talk, I think you're going to realize that it's a little deceptive of a name, GNU Radio. Yes, it is a platform that lets you build a software-defined radios, but that's like calling a computer a machine that calculates. Uh, it can do a lot more. So, you know, the first obvious quote, wow, the colors are literally inverted. Um, okay, but we'll, we'll go with it. Um, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Um, yes, so, GNU Radio, what is it? Um, this is a, a screen cap of their website. I'm not online because we're at Freaknik. Um, for those who've been here before, you'll, you'll get the joke. Um, but yes, uh, they officially call it a, uh, a free and open source software development toolkit that provides signal processing blocks to implement software radios. Um, and, and it's neat. It's, and we're going to get into GNU Radio, something called GNU Radio Companion later. And you, you can literally do just that. One big point that I really want to stress is to get started with this, uh, you actually don't need any hardware. So yes, I have a uh, RPL SDR, um, and I can do interesting things with it, but I really actually don't need any hardware whatsoever, obviously aside from a computer, uh, in order to do this. And so if I don't have any uh, radio equipment, and you know, like if you're not a licensed ham or you're just a software guy, uh, which I actually am a uh, ham, but that's another story, um, then yes, you can just build inside GNU Radio and just have a simulated environment. So this really is accessible to anyone uh, who's uh, technically inclined. Um, there's a couple of ways to get started with this, and then I just want to get this stuff out of the way before getting into the, the interesting stuff. Uh, the absolute easiest way, but not the most performant way, is to just simply grab, go to this website and grab uh, the GNU Radio Live SDR environment, which I am going to demo um, later on. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. Is someone able to close the back door? There's a lot of noise coming down from there. Um, it's kind of through on for a second. So yes, uh, the Pro is, you know, it's a virtual box in, image, right? So you can just fire it up and there you have it. And you get to work immediately. Uh, it, it's, it's not the fastest. I mean, but, you know, still, Corning Labs came up with the virtual box image. Big thank you. It's, it's very, very useful. And I don't know that they teach um, you know, how to do GNU Radio, and that's why I came up with it still. Um, great job on the project. Um, so if, you, if you're if you a Windows user, um, don't imagine there's, well, there's probably some, some number of you, but uh, that's your URL to go to. I, I, I've installed this on pretty much everything except Windows. It's just not, it's just not an interesting platform to me, aside from, from mobile uh, development, but we'll get into that in the hall. Um, on OS X. Uh, surprisingly, on, on the default Yosemite, um, you actually have to install a package manager in Python in order to access another package manager. Uh, so first you have to install pip, and then once you install pip, you need these dependencies. And then I'm going to say use homebrews. Is it, actually, what's the breakdown in this room as far as operating systems? How many people, Linux is their primary system? Okay, that's the next slide. How many people use Mac as their primary system? Almost, okay, well, I, and I, I do too with Linux, which is funny because I'm the National Linux uh, president, um, so go figure. Uh, and any Windows, anyone willing to admit Windows? Okay, more than I thought. <laughs> cool. But not forever. Do I? Not forever. Yeah, not, not for everything. <laughs> not no, I mean, the, yeah, any of these operating systems or tools, they all have their pros and cons. I, mean, that, I think that's a, that's a fair statement. Um, but yeah, if you are a Mac guy, Really super easy job. All you got to do is literally that run homebrew, uh, you know, tap and then install, and you're up and running. Uh, for Linux, you got it pretty easy also. Uh, it's literally just an app kit install GNU Radio or a yum install, and you're up and running. Um, if you want to grab the source, uh, there you go. Although, me personally, I would sooner go to GitHub, uh, GNU Radio, and then you know, slash GNU Radio again would be the main project. Um, there are some other interesting repos that I'm, I'm not going to get into in this talk uh, with that, but a um, little bit more background and then we'll, we'll get into, again, the, the interesting stuff. So, um, one of the key components that we're going to look at is something called a GNU Radio Block. 
Uh, and strictly speaking, it's just a discrete unit of functionality. It has inputs and, uh, and has uh, accepts inputs and has outputs. Uh, that, that's as bland of, of a description as you could possibly make, and I, I recognize that. Uh, but I just want to get some of this terminology uh, out of the way. Um, there are different types of, um, of, of blocks, and there's also different um, you know, terms that you can use in these blocks. Uh, so essentially, if you haven't figured it out yet, you're essentially taking all these different blocks and you're linking them together and then thus you have a radio. Uh, so with the block, you have you know, a port, you have a source, you have a sync connection, you know, your, your connection, uh, your, your flow graph. And your flow graph is really the, the whole, the big <coughs> and we're going to see some examples of these. Uh, you know, item string, item signature. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time because it'll become more apparent as we're actually using this stuff. Um, so the big interface on this, uh, strictly speaking, um, I, I'm pretty sure you can develop GNU Radio uh, projects without Companion. Although, from my plan around with this, I, I don't know anyone who actually does that. Everyone uses this GUI interface. Um, and it, it, it's pretty slick. In fact, it's actually a, a pretty nice little program. We're, you know, we're going to look at it momentarily. Um, yeah. Uh, so GNU Radio Companion, uh, again, it's the graphical interface that allows you to, to do all the, the things. Um, and another point on this is uh, there is the core functionality of GNU Radio and getting back to, um, and again, I'm sorry I'm front-loading so much theory on the front end, but just would rather get this out of the way first before, because there's a lot of demos I really want to show off. Um, you have your core functionality, and then you have what are called out of three modules. So remember back earlier when I mentioned that, um, strictly speaking, you don't have to have any hardware. Obviously, the project feels kind of boring without hardware, uh, you know, specifically radios. And so you're going to find all of that, um, you know, in, in these auxiliary projects. Uh, the other big thing to note is that this is largely a Python project, and so even the idea of introducing JavaScript uh, into uh, GNU Radio is, yeah, so for anyone who knows what GitHub's supposed to look like, that's how inverted the screen is. <laughs> um, yeah, that's actually a screenshot of GitHub. Um, yeah, it's a very Python-centric project. Uh, and one of the things that I'm going to argue in, in this talk is uh, fun function, the core of GNU Radio is built in C++, uh, but the way you script with it is in Python. And the way the Python uh, works, and I'm jumping a little ahead of myself, uh, is using an interface that we're going to talk about that I'm really not a big fan of. And this is why I'm proposing another language, and another way to interface back into that core C++ uh, program. Uh, but PyBombs is a, a great way of actually managing uh, dependencies um, in GNU Radio. Uh, of course, um, like any good project, it's got its own uh, package repository. If anyone's familiar with CPAN from Perl, this is kind of the GNU Radio equivalent uh, thereof. Um, and so some use cases. There's a lot of use cases uh, for this stuff. Um, two really interesting examples is uh, that, that really caught my attention. Uh, this is a research paper of somebody who uh, basically took this, this uh, interface, which I'm realizing now I should have put this all after showing you GNU Radio Companion. Um, but they were basically able to you know, slap some other open source projects uh, into GNU Radio and replace LabVIEW. Is anyone familiar with, with LabVIEW as a program? Um, yeah. That's pretty neat because LabVIEW is not cheap. <laughs> um, another person is using this to uh, do uh, inner balloon data relay using software-defined radios, or in other words, paving the way for distributed space systems. So you could actually build out, uh, first, and, and, and there's a big assumption that I'm making. How many people in this room have, have never heard of the, the term software-defined radio? Because I, I keep using that as a given. Is anyone okay? So very quickly, uh, it, it's what it sounds like. So uh, with a software-defined radio, you're essentially writing radios in, you know, in, as programs uh, rather than uh, having you know traditional you know physical hardware to do uh, all of the various uh, things that you need in order to you know get out a coherent signal. Um, you know, yeah, there's a lot of implications of that. So let's finally talk about GNU Radio Companion. Um, of course, for whatever reason, the colors are going to be inverted, so this will be fun. Um, so first, I actually want to show off 
uh, that virtual box image that I was talking about earlier. Um, okay. Um, I might just show that off. Oh. Oh, that's what's going on. Okay, so apparently I have a second screen. Um, that's fun. Let's see how, uh, how useful that is. So we're, we're going to finally launch Good Radio Companion. And actually, that's going to get annoying very quickly, so sorry. Go ahead and collapse that. Hit uh, Control Option Command Eight, and that will invert the color. Command on the Option uh, Control Option Command Eight. GNU Radio Companion, a few things I want to point out. These are these blocks I'm talking about, right? So they, they're broken down into different categories, audio, Boolean operations, by, uh, operators, uh, all the way down to GSM, Fourier analysis. I mean, you can get really you know, kind of fancy with this stuff. Uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot, you know, a lot of time you know, building out, uh, you know, here's your sinks, these are your sources. Uh, you know, if I, if I wanted to, in instance, you know, have a source, you know, maybe the RTL SDR, which of course I really need to plug this thing in if I really want this to actually work. Uh, I could have a, a source and then I could have, uh, you know, some kind of operator and then you know, shift, click on, click on this, or use control, this. Um, I'm sure that that makes sense. Things that I really like about this is that you actually have a number of, of demos. Uh, this is one such example. Uh, what this will do, and, this, and I'm bringing up this particular example for a few reasons. So this is what a GNU Radio, uh, you know, this is a float, uh, a, a flow graph, right? This is an example of a flow graph. Hey, can you move and, that microphone closer to you? Yeah. So this is a, an example of a flow graph, and okay, yeah. So am I any more coherent? Okay. So yeah, um, due to the resolution of the screen, it's kind of hard to get all of this uh, up here at once. But if we actually run this, um, I'm not hearing it. And this should be a more of a, um, a smoother sound because I'm going to run the same example on the Mac natively. And you're gonna. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is this is the performance that you're taking by running in a virtual box. So this gets you up and running very quickly. But if you wanted to actually do, you know, things outside of training, I really recommend a local install. And that, that's the point of, of this demo. And the um, debug window shows you that the UAs are underrun. Um, yes, that's a very very good point. Um, and by the way, it, you might be thinking, well, maybe you're just under resourcing this virtual machine. So let me actually go ahead and power off this virtual machine. And wow, that's, that's crazy. Um, settings. OK, uh, so I'm, I'm giving this thing 8 gigs of RAM. I'm giving this thing uh, six processors. I have a, uh, yeah, so it's not an under-resourced thing. It's just for whatever reason. You know. so, so one limitation of software-defined radios is that, and it's not really a limitation, it's, in, it's inherent to software-defined radios. They're very time sensitive, right? Uh, so if you have a lot of delay, that, that's not good. <laughs> um, but let's let's run that exact uh, demo now uh, using a uh, Mac. So let's do a new radio companion. It's so weird that it's like it's. If it's in the background, it's inverted. If it's, it's weird. 
Okay. So now I'm actually not going to run that version of it because I screwed it up earlier. Uh, I'm going to open up this version. tell that's how much delay you were dealing with so you know practically to the point of un unusable um, yeah. oh and by the way Python will crash on you all the time <laughs> uh, especially on 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 Mac uh, I'm not 100% sure why that's occurring but uh, that's that's uh, maybe it doesn't on Linux but on Mac it, it certainly does um, and of course there's, there's a whole lot of other demos that we can get into um, you know everything from um, yeah, I mean, there's there's every, everything from from uh, Noah examples to uh, I mean, this, really the sky's the limit. If you, if, you, if it's you know, anything from from an AM transmitter to an FM transmitter or receiver, uh, you know, if it's a radio design you can think of, you could you could implement it in in, um, in GRC. Um, So currently, and the thing that I need to actually show you next is how, how you actually build those blocks, because that's that's key to really the, the whole operation. Uh, the core of GNU Radio and, it, and its API is a C++ API. Uh, however, uh, you script, and, and I, I think I'm, I'm accurate on this, but GNU Radio Companion is built in Python. Um, and so uh, it, it's, it's, and, and Python in and of itself isn't, isn't bad. I don't hate Python. Uh, what I do hate, um, and yeah, so it is this thing called SWIG, right? And so the, the thing is, if you, you know, I, in a perfect world, you would probably write everything in, in, well, I don't think the word perfect world and C++ ever belong in the same <laughs> sentence. Um, but, uh, I, you know, ideally you would want a compiled language that is using, uh, that, that's as fast as C++. Uh, which is, you know, you know, arguably slower to, well, actually it's not arguably, it just is slower to develop. Uh, it can get a lot more complex, and it's not a scripting language. Uh, there's some people that might argue with me on, on that point, because there is a way to, you know, but I don't want to get on that rabbit hole. Uh, Python, you know, one thing you have to hand Python is that it's fast. You can, you know, crank out blocks very, very quickly. Uh, it's a lot slower to execute. Uh, and so the way it's actually working is it's used, so SWIG uh, is, a, is essentially an API wrapper uh, that's injecting, that's basically, um, you know, calling um, this the C++ code from Python. And the thing is, uh, you know, you, so you've built up this entire project in Python, and then when you go, are ready to go to production, uh, you know, you might have to end up rewriting, you know, large parts of it in C++ anyway. So you've now added, you know, double development time. And there's actually a client project that I'm working on now uh, in, in the open CV world, uh, computer vision world, where, uh, and I'm not going to, you know, name any names, uh, but, you know, they wrote everything in Python, and now I'm having to make it work on a mobile device, uh, which means it has to be C++. Um, and I was like, why didn't they just write it in C++ the first time? Uh, or, you know, but they needed that scripting ability because with a scripting language you can rapidly prototype and that's one of the great things about, about that. So, you know, the big what if is, what if you had the, C, the speed of C++ and, but the development speed of Python and you know where this is going but I promise that I'm not insane when I, when I propose it because of how I'm going to inject it. Um, and that's a lot trippier than I originally expected it to look because again, the screen's inverted. Um, but yes, and uh, in, 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 in serious not trolling, uh, there is a way to actually make Python be more performant than, uh, or JavaScript be more performant than the way that they're injecting Python into GNU Radio Companion. Um, and so again, this, this combination of, of Swig and Python, not ideal. It works for simple, uh, simple functions and so on and so forth, but uh, to do much more complicated stuff. I can see where GNU Radio uh, Project is going to eventually have problems if they're not already. Um, funny enough, there actually is a uh, program called uh, Hyperloop uh, Abstraction Layer, or HAL, uh, by Accelerator, and that's really the world I come from, is mobile app development. Um, 
And that's what Codex Labs does. We, we, we're basically, Codex Labs to Accelerator is, the same, is kind of the same relationship that Corgan Labs has to GNU Radio. Um, and so with that, um, so one of the best arguments uh, or posts that I've seen regarding you know, the whole SWIG issue uh, is, is this one. Um, it should be showing me the URL. Uh, but URL is buried. Um, yeah, when, when I show you the repo that, where I'm putting all this stuff, I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll source this uh, so that you can actually read about this. But, I, you know, I've worked with SWIG, uh, you know, with, uh, in, in previous projects, namely there's a, a, a game engine out there called Platino uh, that allows you to write cross-platform uh, video games. And we use SWIG uh, for that for physics. It sucked, and it was horrible. And until version 3.0 of Platino, uh, physics are a joke. Uh, they were terrible. Uh, but, but you know, Swig is great at, at, at automatically, and that's the key word: is auto-generating code, right? Um, but again, you're not getting your ta you're taking on overhead, uh, and a fair amount of overhead. Um, okay, so this is that that best discussion that I was okay, I'm glad I sourced that. Um, but and again, the slides will be made available. Um, and then, this is this website's not live yet, uh, and there's a GitHub repo that that's going to ultimately you know come out of, um, and I'm, I'm going to actually post real benchmarks. I just I hate using the time excuse, but it's legitimate. Um, I just didn't have time to, to properly benchmark this, and so I, I hate that you're kind of taking it on my word, but I'll, I'll have numbers to back this up, um, you know, by December. Uh, so let's talk about you know briefly uh, how and, and how this will actually all come together. So uh, again, uh, PAL is this uh, cross-platform standard compliant C++11 library. It, it, yes, it is a wrapper, but I would argue it's a lot more performant. Um, <coughs> it, it, it's a wrapper, kind of. Uh, what you are ultimately doing um, is you're ultimately ending up with um, C++ objects out of writing JavaScript. And I, I really think that this project needs to be brought into uh, GNU Radio uh, by way of a project that I'm launching, as I said, um, at the end of this month uh, called uh, SDRJS. Um, and yeah, with that, we're able to use you know the, the niceties out of C++11 to, to make this possible. Um, so let me get into these two examples. Um, Okay, so in this example, what we were looking at, and this is this is still just making the case for JavaScript into um, into C++. So in this example, we are looking at a C++ program, um, and so one of the things I'm trying to, to clean up is where you would have actual independent JavaScript files. But essentially, this JavaScript is being ran and ultimately being compiled into uh, you know a JavaScript con into a, a C++ context. Um, and you're running it near the speed of C++. Um, significantly less overhead. Again, I'll post the benchmarks on this uh, to, to, to show that this you know, literally is not smoke and mirrors. Uh, the other example, and so with that, uh, that dial tone, or I didn't show you the dial tone example, but you can also do a dial tone. You can see trivially how you would take, and this is an example of, of a simple block. You can see trivially how you would take, which I didn't close that other one. Um, how you would take something like this, because essentially you just need um, uh, your HAL, which is actually inside this. Uh, you would drop that that light, that in, and essentially you would be, so th it's not really introducing JavaScript blocks uh, per se, even though at the end of the day you are. It's really saying uh, JavaScript injected into C++ without the overhead of SWIG, is what I'm really arguing. Um, because the bottom line is, if, if, if they're going to keep uh, Python, um, you know, in in the, the GNU radio thing, I, I'm really interested in, in hearing why they didn't go with like uh, PyBoost or, or or a different way of injecting. Because it's that SWIG component, I'm not a big fan of. Um, and I think it would be, and if they got rid of that, I think it would be a lot less necessary to uh, rewrite um, your your code as you as you need more and more performance. Um, you, you could, you know.
and then, yeah, so I'm launching that, and then this is going to be the GitHub repo. That's still private, but I am taking that public, so you'll be able to see, uh, you know, some of this um, at midnight tonight. Um, yeah, uh, so far, any, any questions? Because I know I've believed through a lot of information really fast. Okay. Commercial uh, interests? Are you, you're not doing this just as a total hobby because you don't have anything better to do. So, yes and no. Um, this particular project right now isn't necessarily commercial at the moment or won't be. Uh, what I will be doing with Codex Labs is expanding training uh, into GNU Radio. I don't want to go directly head to head with Corbin Labs. I want to. I need to reach out to them uh, and try to find. You know, because I think there's room for, for for more than one player in that market. Uh, I think that GNU Radio is massively not marketed enough and not talked about enough. Um, and again, you can do, when you can use something like your new radio companion to help replace something like lab, <coughs> that in and of itself, you know, it's a whole area of training. I'm, I, I know for a fact they're not even touching that. They're just only showing you, as far as I can tell from looking at their website, uh, they're just showing you how to use GNU Radio you know, as a program. Uh, and, and they're, if they didn't develop, they were certainly huge advocates of the, the Python and, and C++ route. And I, I think that, you know, it, it's, they, they've done a lot of, there's, you know, the whole community's done a lot of amazing work. I'm just not a big fan of the Swig approach. Um, and so, yeah, one more thing that's a little uncomfortable that I've got to get into um, it, with regard to National 2600, since we were being recorded, I'm just throwing this out there. Um, so last year I bailed them out. <laughs> the, the National 2600 big time. Um, you know, As president of National 2600 last year, I will confirm that, and that was the second time this man has saved preaching. So yeah, it's sponsored. Yeah. 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 sponsored in, in 2012, and that was, and you know, <clears throat> zero return out of that. But you know, it's a great conference, so I, I, that wasn't wasn't at all you know mad or buttered about that. Uh, a year after the fact. You know, eventually Codex Labs needs to get paid back. Uh, currently, we are doing uh, Codex Cast uh, subscriptions, uh, you know, as a way of you know people who sign up for that, uh, you know, hundred dollars gets knocked off the debt, uh, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on on 2600, the organization that um, you know. If at the, at the end a of this, a nonprofit needs to pay its debts. Yeah. I'm Johnny X, and I endorse that statement. <laughs> so, and also Keith Watson, because yeah, do you want to talk about that one, Drew? Yeah, Keith Watson, who ran our, our ran our network King of the Hill. He's a big info set guy at Georgia Tech. He runs the DC 404 list down in Atlanta. He is one hell of a guy. I worked at, with him for years at Dragon Con. The nonprofit needs to pay his hotel bill for last year. Yep. So. Uh, yeah, any questions on GNU Radio? There's a lot I didn't talk about. So we have, and I intentionally ran fast so that we would have plenty of time to get into questions. Because I still have about 30 minutes left. Let me see that. Yes. So I'm not really familiar with question. App Accelerator so much. Is that based on V8 or is it a different JavaScript engine? So, yeah, App Accelerator has been around since 2007. And what they do, they have a product called Titanium, which is open source also. And that allows you, on, on iOS, they're using uh, uh, JavaScript Core. And on Android, they're using V8. And, and they're a way, so they were, they were doing a lot of the things React Native was doing before React Native existed or before NativeScript existed. In fact, actually NativeScript, I can argue that they essentially more or less stole Hyperloop from Accelerator and iterated and, and did their own thing. Um, but yeah, it's, and that's what I teach. Uh, that's what Codex Labs is. So if you, you know, want to learn how to build you know, native, actual native apps, but you use JavaScript and you end up with, with you know, those different apps, that, that's what it is. I'm just saying they have some really interesting JavaScript technologies that could really benefit something like GNU Radio. Any other, any other questions? Drew? Are you going to do any demos with the actual hardware so we can do fun things like monitor aircraft in flight and stuff like that? We have time for that. So this is a use case of GNU Radio where um, it's kind of opaque. 
because I'm not using GNU Radio Companion to actually pull this off. But um, if we want to see an example, so there is a program out there um, called 1090. Um, let's see. Um, Let me actually drop the connection really fast and then I'll pull that program up and we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. Um, so while I'm pulling that up, uh, any any other questions? Yes. Have, have you played around with a HackRF? I really want to get my hands on a HackRF. I it's come down to time and not being able to grab one of those. Do, does anyone here have a HackRF? Okay. Um, and what are, you, what are you doing with the HackRF currently? And I'll start with you and I'll go with you. Um, I've played with some uh, VHF radio stuff um, with it. I'm trying to do data uh, from a few spots. And uh, also just the same kind of stuff you do with the RTL and SDR, just uh, seeing random uh, traffic and then seeing if I can replay it and do some other stuff. Nothing too fancy. Okay, and then what do you do with the HackRF? Mostly teach myself how to use GNU Radio. <laughs> so what are you doing with GNU Radio? What's your use case? Um, I'm, I'm just kind of a newbie ham, so I'm trying to get my feet wet into it. look really cool. And so, I've, yeah, I've gotten about as far as making like an FM radio and going, going through tutorials I can find. So nothing really special case. I mean, I'd like to get into like collecting some drone telemetry, and I know uh, our hackerspace in St. Louis does some high altitude balloons and stuff, so pick up some of that, those signals. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to find my 1090 program.